Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Mishmash Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. We're getting a lot of things done here. Uh, we're continuing on with our project today. Today we will mount the Black & Decker drill to the stand. And let me give you the backstory if you're just tuning in here. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was, uh, you know, cruising through eBay and I happened to see, I collect old Black & Decker drills, things like that. I happened to see this beautiful combination drill and drill stand, and it was offered for sale in New Jersey, about an hour from me. It was a, uh, uh, a buy it now, but uh, it was, like I said, it was an hour away, pickup only. So I, after looking and doing some consideration, it was $80, which is a, a very fair price, you know, so I picked it up. I said, okay, let's do this. I I contacted the gentleman, Jim, and I said, you know, does it run? He said, sure, it runs, and happened to be his father's drill. I went over there, picked it up, great guy. Jim was a, a, a tractor enthusiast, so we've attended some of the same tractor shows, probably seen each other, and um, that was it. I picked it up, came home. I uh, did the drill stand a couple videos ago, knocked that out. That came out fantastic. Now we're working on the drill. Um, and, uh, the drill is, it's, you know, very little use on it and, and we're having a great time, but, uh, a couple things to talk about here when doing this drill and, uh, we're going to be doing some other Black & Decker drills. So I'm going to show you the whole procedure and how to take it apart, clean it, lubricate it, whatever. But for this one here, uh, there's an old saying that says, if it isn't broke, don't fix it, okay? And that goes so many times. You know, when you're dealing, especially with these universal motors and dealing with brushes, you see these guys, they're yanking out everything. They're yanking out bearings, they're replacing it. And let me tell you, sometimes you're better off the older bearings, especially old USA-made bearings, Timken bearings, things like that, they're super high quality. So you think that you're doing right by saying, I'll pull out the old bearing and put in a new Chinese made bearing. You know, a lot of these bearings, they're not up to snuff. They don't fit right. You know, same thing with the brushes. You know, if you get a, you get a universal motor, one of those motors with brush and it's running, it's not sparking, it's giving you good power and stuff. Sometimes you're just better off leaving it off alone because you, you can really, you can chase your tail trying to get these things to come right and get the brushes to seat right and find new brushes, find correct brushes and the whole thing. So with this one here, it ran great. It just needed some cleaning and that's all I'm going to do. So let's get to it and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here it is. Now this is a early pre-1949 probably uh, or about then uh, Black & Decker half inch heavy duty drill. They also made a standard duty, and these things were made to run continuous duty, like I said, factories, things like that. These were bulletproof. They were really well made. And alloy gears, ball bearings, and uh, what we did last episode is we took the chuck off. The chuck was frozen. We, uh, we redid the chuck. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take apart the drill, clean it up, and, uh, and work on it now. Now the front part of the drill contains all the gear reduction. Uh, this is the housing here. Now to take this off, you're going to need an impact screwdriver. Don't even try it without one and the proper bit. Now it always helps to make up a jig. Here I'm using two vices and I'm placing the drill between the two. It just makes it so much easier to work on. Now to clean off this uh, tar and oil that's on here, the first thing you're going to do is I'm going to take some acetone and a real brass, genuine brass brush, followed by some fine Scotch-Brite with WD-40 to, uh, to get all the residual goo off. Now this is where a jig like this comes in really handy when you're working on. You could spin it around, you could see what you have to deal with. Uh, right now I could see in here, I'm looking at the commutator and it looks very... Uh, in good shape and there's no grooves in it. It's the perfect color. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. And the brushes are all have a lot of uh, life in it. Again, these were made for a lifetime. The cord obviously needs to be replaced here. You know, the rubber boot and the cord will do that. But uh, everything looks very good. Now, what I like to do is as I'm taking everything apart, I slowly look at everything, inspect it, and then clean it right there before I go to the next step. This way, every part gets cleaned, taken apart, and then you open up another part. And then you'll get to that part and clean it, scrape any grease off, clean it out, and then put that aside until you get to the inner parts, like for these bearings. Now, what's great news is when I saw these bearings, 
First of all, the grease is in fantastic condition. It's not dried out. It's not filled with sawdust. It was good, but I took it out and replaced it. Okay, here's the real bell housing that goes over the back and covers the brushes, things like that. Now, this was painted at one time, but I remember, I think, I don't know if it was Van Dorn or one of the early uh, subsidiaries that Black & Decker took over. Uh, I remember they used to have a polished end cap. So I went down, I was able to get below the paint because this paint is all screwed up. I'm going to see if I could polish this out. That would really look sharp on there. So I'm going to try that out. Okay, now here we have the uh, rear handle. This is actually a hollow casting. It looks heavy duty. It looks super heavy, lightweight, but it's it's light and it's very it's strong, but light. And uh, I don't like the gray though, you know. I Again, uh, I've seen, I think it was the Van Dorn or they, you know, remember Black & Decker took over a lot. And uh, even though Black & Decker were both machinists, you know, the style wise, uh, there were other companies that really had the style down pat that were doing some really crazy, beautiful things and and uh, again when you're painting something you could paint the whole thing gray or you can you know you can do it up nice with little accents to it like the old 50s cars so i want to do something different with this now, thing this is why you never just take when you're taking something apart you don't take these screws and just throw them into one one of those magnetic dishes because let me show you something that uh, you have to be very aware of when you're taking apart any kind of vintage machinery you see here you notice something that middle screw is a quarter of an inch shorter you see that so if i was to uh just put these back haphazardly i could be bottoming out or possibly do some damage you always have to be careful always measure each one before you take and, and put it that they go back in the same hole they came out of okay now we got everything back together let me check the arc of the spark you're always going to have some sparks but it should be a nice line That's absolutely acceptable. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this Black & Decker drill and drill stand looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Wow, take a look at this. Huh? Let's take a look at what we did. Uh, very happy with this, the way it came out. This is more or less trying to keep it as original as possible, but doing it up that it comes, it works good. And let me show you everything about this fantastic setup and how awesome this is. Now the is. first thing I want to show you is how ingenious this is that how it comes apart because there's nothing worse than when it takes 15 minutes to take a drill off or put it back on you know then it it's a deterrent about you know using it for the drill but with this system the way they have it all you have to do is you have one uh, screw here that loosens up and there's a little pin that holds it up here so what you do is you hold it down here like this you give it a couple turns to open up the little clamp and it will release the uh, you can see here it's made especially for that open it up like this uh, I like to open a little bit more pull it out like that and there it is real time how quick that comes off just absolutely a beautiful system and let me show you another thing now when you first look at this you think this is a slide here you know that will go up and down but no this is just a rack that you adjust it to whatever drill you're going to be using for this drill stand so this is once this is adjusted it stays adjusted the only thing is this this clamp down here will move in and out but other than that this this locks up one time the only moving rack here that you have is this piece here that we're going to grease now but you see that rides up and down on that rack to keep it here in the spring obviously but let's take now, a look here at we drill. have our drill all cleaned up and brought back to very close to what it would look like original um the finish on here it's, a, it's more or less like a satin finish that's the original aluminum finish that came on here uh the chuck is rebuilt uh now i made the handle black i told you before i didn't like the gray and on the back handle black i really think it sets it off and i polished the top cap now uh on the van dawn uh which is a company that black and decker took over this was a red cap and on other companies they had this black and there were so many drills that looked the same i often wonder if either they were copied or they were made for other companies by Black & Decker or something else. Now, I have another cord, a, a relief on order, but I wanted the big, I want the one with the spring on there. You ever see the one, the strain relief with the chrome spring? I think that would look so cool to go with this industrial cord. Um, 
Uh, if you're looking for a drill, the main thing you got to look for, believe it or not, this tag. You see that that tag? That is the hardest part to restore, unless you get one remade. But uh, it, that's what you look for. Always look for a nice. When you see one that's in good shape, a nice tag. You know, the, the, everything else you can pretty much clean up. But um, let us mount it on. Let me show you how this works. We're going to mount it onto the the drill stand again. Now again, this is going to be real time on how quick you can mount this up. This comes here, there's a little hole here that matches up with this pin. So you just bring up the drill till that hole goes into the pin, slide this forward, and just clamp this down. Now we have it already set to what size we have, so we just screw this down like this, tighten it up, and that's solid. That's rock solid. It's in there, ready to go, ready to work. Now let me show you the setup here. This is the first time we'll be drilling anything with this drill in God knows how long. But you see, I have a, a temporary setup. You would, you can make a base. You can do whatever you want. You can adjust this to whatever height you want. But it's not as easy if you had a drill press with a, a platform that goes up and down. You know, so this is something that would be, you know, used for repetitive drilling or whatnot. So uh, I have it set up in my little vise here, and we're just going to take a quick drill. Now, that is 600 RPM, would be a little bit slow for wood, but you could see it does a beautiful job, a nice now, straight Now, since uh, getting this drill back together, I didn't, I didn't measure run out on this, but the uh, chuck seems to be working very nicely. Let me show you. Just, just beautiful. I can play with this all day long. So in closing, I got a, a kind of a funny story I want to share with you. Uh, you know, a couple days ago, I was in the middle of, uh, I had the drill all apart. It was all done, but I was just ready to put it back together. And I get an email from a, uh, a subscriber, a good, great guy, Anthony Kelly, sends me a, uh, <laughs> sends me an email and he says, Hey, John, he goes, I, I think I, I think I have that same half inch drill. It was uh, my father-in-law's and it actually survived a garage fire. And uh, he got the drill and restored it. And, what a, and, and he says, I thought maybe I, I'd throw you a few pictures, maybe you enjoy it. <laughs> so I'm looking at these pictures, right? And he shows it what it looked like when he got it and then taken apart and everything. And then he showed the after picture and I was blown away. I was like, oh my God, look at that with that black cap on there. So I just finished polishing out the back of my cap, you know, to make it silver. And I'm looking at that going, it looks so sweet black, you know, that again, that Van Dorn or whatever who made it. But I said, like, oh, that looks awesome. Isn't that a beautiful job? Anthony did a fantastic job on that. And this, you know, when you look at these drills, the way, you know, when they're done up nice, they're just pieces of art, aren't they? They're beautiful. And that whole industrial look. And, and again, these were made in a time when, you know, the long before throwaway things, these things are made to last a lifetime. They were, you know, there was everything there that was made on that drill press and that drill that was made forever. That wasn't made that, well, a couple years they'll buy a new one. That's not the way they thought back then. Everything was meant to be rebuilt or, you know. So anyway, uh, Anthony, thanks so much for sending me. I was I was sitting here. I went to sleep. I was thinking, should I paint the back of mine black? Because it looks so awesome. But I said, I'll, I'll just leave it the way it is. Maybe the next one I get. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video series. Thanks so much for tuning in and uh, have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.